What is up guys, this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi Note 7 Pro and today in this video I'm going to be showing you the latest project Elixir ROM based on Android 13 and this is the 13th January 2023 build. The ROM version is 3.5 and this is actually a fix to the previous build which was the 11th January 2023. I have already updated to the latest build just by dirty flashing it. If you don't know what I'm talking about or if you don't know how to flash this ROM, you can check out the flashing guide from the description. Talking about the about section, this is how it looks like. We get the Project Elixir logo right here, then we have the wallpaper right there and here it shows that your device is officially supported and this is maintained by sort of so huge thanks to the developers of this rom and we have the android version as android 13 and if you make this clock to one o'clock you will see the android 13's easter egg and as you can see there are a bunch of these emojis and stuff appearing and we have the security patch of latest january 5th 2023 the elixir version is 3.5 the stock kernel here is Excalibur Plus, the SNX data shows as enforcing and the build date here is 13 January 2023 again. In the system panel, this is how it looks like we do get a Elixir updater and you can check for updates from here and in the gestures of it, we have the swipe to a screenshot. Let me show you, it actually works perfectly fine. We have the share, edit, delete and the Google Lens and even the capture mode feature is available. Then we have the system navigation gestures. In the settings of it, we get the full screen gestures. We have the pill length customization, the back gesture haptic feedback, swipe to invoke assistant also works fine. And we have the left edge, right edge customization. Let me go back from here. We have the two button and three button navigations. And here we have the press and hold power button action. You can change it to assistant if you want. We have the quickly open camera. Then if you scroll down more, we have the one handed mode too. That actually works perfectly fine too. Let's talk about the home screen first. Well, this is how it looks like. This is the quick step launcher present by default here. And to the left of the home screen, we get the Google Stage cover page and swiping on it will scroll this page. But yeah, sometimes like for the first time, the scrolling is a little bit jittery, but once it loads, it's perfectly fine, I would say. Now here, let me show you swiping up on the home screen will get to the app drawer and there is that background blur if you're noticing that frosted glass kind of effect on the app drawer and if you swipe down, you will get the quick setting panel which looks like this. I have added multiple toggles which I'll show you. But let me show you the home screen settings first. This is how it looks like the quick step launcher settings pretty much. And in the misc settings, we have the background blur depth and stuff. You can customize that. We have the hidden and protected apps. Then we get the allow home screen rotation and the taskbar customization. Then we get the suggestion disabling option. If you want to disable the home screen or app drawer suggestion, you can disable it from right here. And we have the recents. Now here we get the screenshot lock app and the Google Lens option too. If you want to enable all those, it actually shows the memory info and stuff and the scroll vibration, etc. and the background opacity too. And on the bottom, if I show you up close, we get the screenshot, the lens option and the clear all and the lock particular app option. Then on the bottom, we can see the free RAM status. So that's really cool. And of course, you can go into the split top mode and stuff if you want to from right here. In the app drawer settings, we have the row height and the background opacity customization. Then we get the icon labels in drawer, enable app drawer search bar, then themed icons for the app drawer you can enable. And even for the home screen settings, we have the lock layout, add app icons to the home screen, dark status bar, double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen is present. We have the wallpaper scrolling and zooming. Then we have the at a glance, swipe to access Google app and stuff. Then the hot seat background and we also have the themed icons for the home screen and the whole search bar etc customizations let me go back in the icons we have the icon pack changing option obviously you can add any icon that you want here we have the notification dots the icon size font size and the max lines for app level customization talking about the quick setting panel again this is how it looks like we have the brightness slider on top and you can toggle the auto brightness if you want now i have added these kind of toggles the wi-fi bluetooth toggle etc and of course the bluetooth battery stats from the quick setting panel and if you tap here you can see that like small kind of pop-up of the bluetooth settings and here on the top in the status bar too it shows the bluetooth battery if you are wondering about that now i haven't inserted a sim card but of course if you insert a volty sim card it should be working perfectly fine here there is a night light the hotspot and the screen recording option is also there there is that hvc processing for the screen recordings and we have the device audio and microphone audio recording at the same time with that now the battery saver do not disturb google home controls etc are there if you scroll down more, we have the FPS counter right here. So you can enable it if you want to see the like normal FPS and in the power menu, this is how it looks like. If you tap on advanced, you can directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot from right here. Talking about the widgets, I did try to add the battery widget, but it's actually not working as you can see. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So let me just remove it for the time being. Now here, double tapping on the blank area of the home screen will make the phone sleep because the ROM has the double tap to sleep and even the double tap to wake just works perfectly fine. If I tap the fingerprint scanner, as you can see, it unlocks. I had the face unlock enabled. Let me just do that to the when swiping up on the lock screen. Right now, this is how the lock screen looks like. The font actually looks pretty bold. And here, if I just tap the fingerprint scanner, as you can see, it unlocks. 
let me show you a couple more times and yep the finger scan kind of speed is very fast no issues whatsoever and it does give me a haptic feedback once i just tap the finger bit scanner so yeah it definitely is like a faster experience and if i show you the app lock it is actually working fine as you can see it shows unlock this particular app and if i tap the finger bit scanner as you can see the app particularly unlocks now here talking about the face unlock let me just double tap to wake and just swipe up and as you can see this is how the face unlock works let me show you one more time i just swipe up and hold the device towards my face and it unlocks so very fast experience of like unlocking all the way fingerprint face unlock app lock everything is working fine here let's talk about the stock camera this is how it looks like this is obviously the miui camera present by default you have the watermark suggestion etc options and the picture quality you can adjust the volume button functions you can change then we have this customization we also get the more options if you want that and we have these other colors and stuff changing option fingerprint shutter save previous mode etc options are there then we have even more options like these the picture quality is good enough i did take some pictures this is the, with the rear camera and it is taking 12 megapixel photos right out of the box in the video settings you can shoot up to 4k 30 fps and we have the 1080p 60 fps option and in the pro mode you can shoot pro mode photos but there is no video option for the pro mode but if you swipe up there is that 48 megapixel mode let's test that i did give this photo some time to actually process if I go into the info and yes, this is a 48 megapixel photo. So I can confirm 48 megapixel mode is actually working fine. Let's just do one thing. Let's just go into the portrait mode and with the front camera, I'll just take a photo, then give it some time. So I just took the photo. I am not opening it. I'll open it after some time. Maybe now I can open it. So this is the photo I took. And if I go into the info, so yes, you have to give the photo some time, then you can open it, then only it will be processed. Otherwise, if you just open the photo right after you click it, it may not process. As you can see right now, it's 13.2 megapixel as I open it later. And yes, the quality is good enough. You can see the background blur and stuff. Everything is detailed. If you take a portrait selfie, make sure you give it some time to process, then only open the photo. Otherwise, it will get stuck on 0.7 megapixel. This particular bug is present pretty much with all the custom ROMs on the Redmi Note 7 Pro based on Android 13. If it has a MIUI camera. Now let's talk about the battery settings. Well, this is where I'm pretty interested on this particular ROM because this is how the battery settings looks. Just look at that animation. Looks dope with this green kind of bar. We can see the battery usage. We can have the battery saver on if you want. And we have the battery optimization. You can set it per app. Now, if you scroll down more, you will see we get to see the battery temperature, the current battery capacity, design battery capacity, and the charging cycles as well. This is insanely good. And this is an old device, but still, all these features are getting into the Redmi Note 7 Pro and I'm just happy about it. By the way, I do have a third party kind of battery. This is not the original battery brand called AI Power. The battery is working good enough. And as you can see, I have gone through about 33 charging cycles. And afterwards, I would say it has been holding pretty well. If I show you the screen on time, I have been getting about eight plus hours of screen on time. That's really good in my opinion. The screen of or the standby time is about five days. Combined use is worth of two days of usage. So that's a really good amount of battery life. And from the health section, it shows me that my battery health is about at 92%. So yeah, very good battery life that I have been getting, no issues whatsoever. Even the charging speed is very fast. No issues that I have faced with the charging speed with 18 or 33 watt fast chargers. Now let me talk about the customization. Well, they are present inside this essence and the animations everywhere looks beautiful. If you scroll down more, you will get all the customization like from the themes. You can change the custom theme to black or something if you want. But this device has a IPS display, so no point of using pitch black. We have the headline and body fonts. And again, plethora of body fonts are there. There are the nothing dot font and stuff if you want to use those. Or there is these many options. Sony Sketch, every option is there. And in the icon packs, we get these many options. And in the signal icon styles, we get these many options and plethora of options, I would say, in terms of the signal icons, the Wi-Fi icons have this much. In the lock screen, we have the double tap to sleep, the screen of animation, ripple effect, and we have the media cover art customization. Then we have this hide status bar and the lock screen charging info is also present. Here inside status bar, we have the double tap to sleep again and we have the 4G icon. Then the roaming indicators showed mobile data type icons, combined signal icons, and the headset, Bluetooth, etc. kind of icons are also present. The traffic indicators options are there, and the clock and date customization is also there. And there is that background chip. If you are noticing that, I've been using it. No issues whatsoever with that. And the battery style, you can change between these many options. I have been using with the icon landscape. And we have this battery percentage position. You can change it next to the icon if you want, just like this. And we have also this battery charging bolt color. You can change it to yellow if you want. 
and we have this reticker option too if you want to enable that. In the quick setting panel, we have the disable sensitive quick setting tiles. Then if you scroll down more, we have the quick setting customization. You can customize the quick setting panel styles if you want. We have this outline style. So if you want to enable that, this is how it will look like. So yeah, definitely a lot of customizations are there. Even the brightness slider icon, you can change it to outline so that it looks like this. We have this switch to fluid UI quick setting style and the background opacity kind of changing option. If you scroll down more, we have the auto brightness icon and the data usage, that's it. In the gestures, we have that system kind of gesture settings that you get, nothing much. And in the miss settings, we have the disable power menu on lock screen, enable advanced restart, ignore secure flags, the power menu animation, you can change the animations if you want. Long press power button toggle torch is also there. If you want to use that, then we have the volume steps. In call vibrations are there. So we have the hide icons of Asians, unlock higher FPS in games. And even we have the game space, you can add any game that you want to over here so that the game space bar will show up once you launch a game. In the display settings, we have the brightness level, adaptive for auto brightness, extra dim functionality, and we have the lock screen settings. Here we get that face unlock customization, then we have the show device controls, control from lock device and stuff, then the wake screen for notification. In the advanced settings, if you go, it just force closes for some reason. In all ROMs, it's happening mostly. And we have the screen timeout, then the dark theme option. And here we have this scheduling option for the dark theme. If you scroll down more, we have the night light, then the wallpaper zoom effect, then the allow window level blurs, then the double tap to wake. In the sound and vibration, this is how it looks like. We have the media call, volume, ring, volume, etc. options. And this is how the volume panel looks like, by the way. You can increase or decrease the volume from right here. You can switch the output device just like this. You can also put the phone into mute or silent or even like to vibrate if you want from right here. And we have the phone ringtone, then the live caption, etc. Then you scroll down more, we have that charging sound and vibration, touch vibration, per app volume control is also there. We have the screenshot sound. And in the Mi Sound Enhancer, we get these many options for the headphone presets. And even we have these presets, bass booster and stuff. And with all these, I would say the sound quality with the headphone jack, the Bluetooth, the speakers, and even the earpiece has been good enough. No issues whatsoever that I have faced. But let me actually show you once you play music, this is how it will look like the app volume. You can tap here to actually change the app particular app volume that you are playing music on or even it will work for media players and stuff. And once you are playing music, it will show up in the quick setting panel too. And you can switch the output device from right here too. So all these things looks very beautiful. And even on the lock screen, it will show a seek bar like this. And yeah, while playing music, the lock screen definitely looks beautiful. As I have already showed you the security stuff, let me just go home and let me show you the basic things. Like the safety net test passes right out of the box, so you don't need to worry about using banking apps on this ROM. Also, the IR Blaster works perfectly fine here, so you should not worry about it. The Dion Info stays as L1 here, so you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p. Talking about Google Photos, yes, the Google Photos Pixel Unlimited Backup is supported. So you can use this to actually back up unlimitedly on like Google Cloud with the photos. But let me tell you, this ROM does not have the app lock supported for the Google Photos. So all other apps shows up in the app lock settings, but only the Google Photos, I don't see that option in the app lock. Talking about overall performance while daily driving, I did not see any issues whatsoever. Even the scrolling and stuff in Twitter, it has been fine. Let me show you that from here if it loads. So right now if I scroll, as you can see, the Twitter scrolling is perfectly fine once it loads. So yeah, no issues whatsoever with Twitter scrolling that I have faced. And even in browsers or even Play Store and stuff, it has been perfectly fine. And here are the Android and Geekbench score with a CPU stress test on this particular build to give you an idea about the daily driving performance of this ROM. So if you ask me personally, who is this ROM for? Well, if you're someone who likes to have a proper ANIX camera working perfectly, but you can give it some time to actually process the photo before you open it. And if you're a nerd like me, and if you want to have your battery monitored all the time, you can actually see the battery charging cycle, the current battery capacity, design battery capacity, and the battery temperature and stuff over here, right out of the box. This is a really unique feature, which is not present in most ROMs, but here you get that. So all these features does make this ROM really unique. And I can definitely recommend you guys using the Project Elixir ROM. This is definitely one of the best options for the Redmi Note 7 Pro you can go with. Also comes with Android 13 obviously, and all the banking apps and stuff should work fine right out of the box and has a lot of customization that one needs. So yeah, definitely I can basically recommend this ROM to anyone who wants to like actually use a custom ROM based on Android 13 on their Redmi Note 7 Pro, even for other devices as well. But in other devices, you won't get the MIUI camera 
that's how it is but for the redmi note 7 pro you are actually going lucky to get the anx camera or the miui camera right out of the box so give this video a thumbs up if you liked it share this video with your friends if you feel like and do subscribe to the channel if you have not yet guys this is tito from kdndx signing off for today and i'll be catching you guys in the next one bye now